I'd like to describe a technique called the pivot rotation technique, which is an effortless way to rotate the intraocular lens bidirectionally within the capsular bag with minimal zonular stress. Now let's see, once implanted within the capsular bag, the intraocular lens, be it a shearing model or a plate haptic model, is difficult to rotate freely due to three important reasons that impede its rotation. Reason number one is the direction of the haptic. In the shearing's design, the sweep of the haptics only allows for rotation in the clockwise direction and anti-clockwise direction is difficult. Reason number two, equatorial stretch. The placement of a 12mm overall diameter IOL within a 10.5mm bag produces an equatorial stretch of the bag and this will resist free rotation. A plate haptic IOL has an overall diameter of 11 millimeters and will also stretch the capsule as these haptics are not easily compressible like the Schering's haptics. The positioning holes in these lenses will also cause a late adhesion between the anterior and posterior capsule and restrict the free rotation of the IOL. Reason number three is the frictional drag force that exists between the posterior capsule and the posterior surface of the intraocular lens and between the haptic's outer circumferential surface and the equator of the capsular bag. This will also impede the free rotation of the in the bag intraocular lens. Now, there is a simple maneuver by which we can greatly minimize all these three forces and perform an effortless rotation of the intraocular lens without any zonal stress. And what's more, we can do this in both directions, both clockwise as well as anti-clockwise within the capsular bag. Now, I got this idea from the coin trick analogy. Let's see what this is. Now, when you try to spin a coin with the coin lying flat on a surface, then it will be difficult to do so because of the frictional drag in the surface contact area. However, if you stood this coin on its side, by reducing the surface contact area as well as the frictional drag, you can make this coin rotate freely in both directions with a simple tap on one of its surfaces. Tilting the IOL within the capsular bag will reduce the equatorial stretch, reduce frictional drag between the posterior capsule and the IOL optic, open up the anterior posterior diameter of the capsular bag and the IOL can be rotated in both directions with just a slight tap on the anterior surface of the intraocular lens. I call this technique the pivot rotation technique or the tilt and turn technique. Now let's see how this technique actually works in a clinical scenario. Now this patient had a ocular cutaneous albinism and this case was chosen in order to demonstrate the pivot rotation technique more clearly to you. The intraocular lens in this case is a hydrophilic acrylic lens that is implanted into the capsular bag. Now once the lens is implanted into the capsular bag, then using a Sinsky hook, you take it to the periphery and tilt the IOL with the help of the Stinsky hook. Once the IOL is tilted, the coaxial IA probe is passed beneath the optic. In case you're using a bimanual IA, you pass the irrigation cannula of the bimanual system under the optic. Now this point will act as a fulcrum against which the pivot rotation can be effected. Now gently tapping the anterior surface of the intraocular lens will make it rotate freely in both directions. This is because of the absence of the frictional drag as well as the reduction of the equatorial stretch. The absence of stretch lines on the posterior capsule and as well as the rexis indicates that there is no zonular stress at all. And you can see how freely the lens can be rotated in both directions, both in the clockwise and the anti-clockwise direction and how freely this can be done. Now let us observe the whole thing without actually taking a break. IOL is tilted, the coaxial IA probe is placed under it, acts as a fulcrum and gently tapping the lens will make the lens rotate on the rim of the optic using the haptic edges as a shoulder. And this can be done bidirectionally, both clockwise and anti-clockwise. This is how simple it is. Now let's look at some of the applications of the pivot rotation technique. 
The most important and obvious application or use is in the implantation of the toric intraocular lens. Now once the toric intraocular lens is implanted within the capsule or bag, then by using the pivot rotation technique, the intraocular lens can be rotated to the desired axis of placement. The lens is adjusted for parallax and then simply dropped into place. Even if you overshoot the mark, it's very simple to tilt the lens again and go back to about 5 to 10 degrees in order to achieve excellent alignment of the toric intraocular lens. The second important advantage is in the case of small pupils. Now once you implant an intraocular lens in a small pupil and you're able to put the haptic or tuck the haptic into the capsular bag, you're not extremely sure whether this IOL is in the capsular bag. Now remember that the ability to pivot rotate actually confirms the in the bag location of the intraocular lens because if the lens was totally in the sulcus or it was partly in the sulcus and partly in the bag then pivot rotation will not be possible. Pivot rotation is possible not only in sharing design of intraocular lens, this is a plate haptic design of the bunny lens and you can see that even in these lenses it's very easy to perform the pivot rotation technique. This is a plate haptic design lens and you can see how easy it is to perform the pivot rotation. However, in the very thin Zeiss multifocal lenses, this procedure is a little difficult because the haptics tend to pop out of the capsular bag. In this patient, I was doing a routine pivot rotation and see what happens that the sweep of the haptics actually dislodged a piece which I would have otherwise totally missed if I had not done the pivot rotation. Similarly, pivot rotation can also help to dislodge stubborn cortical remnants, especially if the pupil is small and you are not able to visualize the cortex. A couple of times of pivot rotation will cause this cortex to pop out from within the capsular bag and enable you to easily remove them. In the next example, while injecting the intraocular lens, it, it flips over and goes upside down. And in such a scenario, it is possible to leave the lens as it is within the capsular bag, but it would be a good idea to actually flip this intraocular lens back to its original position and for this you can use the pivot rotation technique where a 360 degree pivot is utilized in order to settle the intraocular lens the right side up within the capsular bag. I hope you try the pivot rotation technique and I hope it works for you. I thank you all for your attention.